Yes. Uh, for a multiple bit, is it simple? Yes. Yes, Karthik. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. So today I am going to discuss about the drug discovery from the phytopathogenic fungi. See, what is the emergence need of the new drugs? So if you ask anyone what is the most dangerous disease, means everyone tell the cancer, cholera, HIV, lot of other, it is in COVID-19, everything. But most important thing is AMR is emerging very fastly. So WHO predicted by 2015, around 10 million people will be died due to the AMR issue. The worldwide, if you see, the Asia will have the biggest threat. After that, Africa has the biggest threat because of the mis misconsumption of the all the regular antibiotics. We we all know that uh, without a doctor prescription, we can get the antibiotic in any pharmacy still in India. Even government made a lot of regulations still we are using. And not only that, in our foods like agriculture field and even the poultry industry, everywhere there are antibiotics they are using very casually. Due to that, we are uh, taking uh, the antibiotics like a food without disease also we are day-to-day -day life also a lot of antibiotics are going so due to that the mr conditions the day by day is going very worse in india this worldwide threat in india is a still more threat so there is a very urgent need to find the new antibiotics so what is there see india also one of the very rich source of uh, the nature right so obviously the all the natures have a unique natural products is one of the important source for the drug discovery but what is the challenge with us you can see this uh, the red line clearly indicate that even though a lot of modern technology a lot of researchers are there still we are struggling to discover new lead molecules the blue color indicate every year we are claiming a lot of drugs are discovered but it's only the functional group uh, changed modified drugs only not in the lead structure itself okay so then there is a very urgent need to find the new lead molecules Okay, which doesn't have any resistance towards uh, any pathogenic microbes. So then what is the opportunity with us? The recent whole genome sequencing revolutions and the bioinformatics tool have the more opportunity to find the new lead molecules. So one of the source is, we all know that first everyone will tell the acnobacteria. It's a fungi-like bacteria. Okay, that is one of the major producer of antibiotic. The second one is that filamentous fungi. Because it's a habitat to grow in any environment. It's easy to adapt and it will grow. Okay, it's predicted that 2 into 10 to the power of 6 species if exist. Okay, after the whole genome sequence, they found that every fungi mostly has that 50 biosynthetic gene clusters averagely. Okay, and more classic antibiotics like a penicillin, cephalosporin, statin. This all the antibiotics isolated from the fungi. But after that, when we ask any new drugs, means only few, only we can able to coin, we are able to find it. Okay, so then what is the new technology is needed to find the new drug from the fungi? See, by 2020, Prasca et al. reported, so far, what are the antibiotics are reported from the fungi? So how many people uh, know, I don't know that, see this entire graph, this many species and this many antibiotics are reported from the fungal species. The blue color particularly indicates the psychiatric compound, the light yellow and green is all indicate the antifungal, antibacterial. So like that several antibiotics are reported from this fungal species. And recently, as I said that only few are in the clinical trial one to trial three stages. You can see I listed that uh, around uh, three, six, nine compounds are now in the clinical uh, trial. One to three stages are reported, particularly for cancer kind of things. Uh, most of the drugs isolated from the fungal species. So as I told that, what is the opportunity with us? The sequencer. See the olden time, everyone know that Sanger sequencing after the Illumina sequencer came. But the challenging is uh, to handle and the machine cast so a lot of people don't have the expertise to handle. Every time we wait for the industry people to run, to prepare the library and everything. So it's a challenge to us. Recently, Oxford University discovered the new method called nanopore technology. It's a very handy, just one laptop is enough. Okay, and we can buy the library preparation just to one hour to complete. Okay, within 24 hours, we can complete 24 uh, strains of uh, whole genome sequence we can complete. If you know the bioinformatics assembly and all, it will take another two days. So within three days, we can complete the whole genome sequence of bacteria and fungi kind of strains. 
so easy to handle that so due to that the cost will be reduced drastically for example if i can complete one batch using this nanopore kind of technology i can complete uh, the cost will be 10 to 12000 plus time if you run it in our own lab if you go outside obviously still they are charging 25 30000 if our lab if you run you can see the starting 2003 the human project time what is the cost now the same hundred dollars it came okay then another few demo uh, years it may be come to 50 or 10 dollars level it will come so technology that much level it went and we can run everything in our in-house lab itself okay now the whole genome is easy and if you go to the NCBA and uh, join the laboratory uh, in USA, if you see several whole genome sequencing there for fungi, bacteria, everything. But still we are unable to find a lot of new molecules. What is the problem? The term called as a cryptic gene or silenced gene. If I, if I ask everyone, penicillin isolated from the, what is the strain? Everyone tell, yeah, penicillin, chrysogenum, penicillin, notatum, everyone can tell. But if the question, if I ask, after the penicillin, what are the other antibiotics isolated from the penicillin chrysogenum notatum? If asked, no one tell. So we don't know. Why? That means the strain capable to produce only one antibiotic? No, it's not the, really true. You can see this uh, graph clearly that penicillin chrysogenum, after the whole genome, they predicted that it capable to produce the 33 percent gene cluster it to hold. But only so far we identify one or two molecules. Remaining 32 is a uh, silent genes. So we are unable to activate those genes. So that all modern technology is needed to activate this silent gene to find the new molecules. So not only the penicillin, we can see all the strains. This is the same issue is there. So what our team done? So we collected along with Acnobacteria marine sponge associated fungi as well as phytopathogenic fungi. This is a Around 500 phytopathogenic fungi we have sequenced first time. Okay, and after the whole genome sequencing, we went for the analysis. Like everyone knows, anti smash analysis is one of the very good tools to find how many gene clusters are there and how many is the novel, everything we can be able to predict through this tool. When we submitted some of the our strains to know how many gene clusters are there, what are the new compound present, everything when we analyze, we find very interesting results. You can see. Uh, here one of the example i presented it's have the 50 through uh, 53 gene clusters but only five to ten compounds only is are reported remaining all are novel one the same way another strain capable to produce 48 uh, uh, gene cluster uh, that means 48 common can able to produce but only few are uh, reported remaining all are novel see this kind of strains this strains capable to produce 27 gene cluster but only one match that also only 29 percentage only match remaining is not at all matched with any other commercial or known antibiotics and as i told that penicillin chrysogenum only one is reported you can see this clearly most of the gene clusters are still empty that means it's, uh, it's not matched with any reported compound okay so these all are still it's a cryptic or silent stage so how to activate this See, we all, the traditional method is Osmark approach. That means one strain, many compound. What is the way to activate silent gene? Change the pH, temperature, carbon source change, nitrogen source change. This is the way traditionally we will do in our lab, right? But it's not work for all the strains. So when it not express what we should do, obviously to the genetic manipulations and heterologous expressions, those kind of technologies are needed to activate such a silent gene so as i told the one of the traditional method is a co-culture technique still it's a very good tech to to activate the silent gene from fungi and as i told that uh heterologous expression so one of the unique technology to activate the silent gene after a whole genome sequencing you will analyze what are the antibiotic gene clusters are there. then the particular gene cluster will amplify then we will express in the suitable host So it, the fungal capable to produce PKS1, 2, polyketide, and NRPS, repo a protein, several compounds, but one of the unique compound is terpenoid compounds. Particularly the ascomita, basidomita is a unique producer. So three kinds of terpenoids are there, sesquiterpene, di, and triterpenoids. Okay, in this uh, particularly sesquiterpenoid have huge biological activity potential. Okay, this all are 
uh, derived from the 5 carbon precursor molecule the dmp and ipp is a molecule is uh, mostly produced through the mevalonate pathway so as i told that this is q terpene the unique thing is this is a c15 molecule diterpene is a c20 and type terpene is a c13 so so for how many scaffolds are reported means 300 sesquiterpene scaffolds are reported so what is the unique uh, characterization signature of acticide is it have the motive dtxst and the nsc these are two active sites we can able to find easily and a very important and unique exam, uh, enzyme recently found from the fungal species is bifunctional terpene synthesis hereafter it's shortly called bftss this is one of the unique enzyme we found majorly on phytopathogenic fungi normal fungal also it have this unique enzyme but phytopathogenic have the more unique ways so we can see for other slides how the way we screen that so if you go to the literature survey so far in a database chemical database so for 21 characterized bfts functional synthesis are there so every synthesis sequence we collected from the ncba database and matched with our 500 uh, whole genome sequence of phytopathogenic fungi we matched with that and we found that around uh, seven unique uh, fungal have this particular uh, synthesis enzyme after confirming that we found that which is how the unique how to go to the next stage which one we can choose for that when we analyze using the anti smash is biosynthetic gene clusters uh, i want to go reverse in this way you can see this bipolaris foranic uh, is one of the plant pathogenic have the glycosylate transferase you can see this the green color is in the synthetic cluster it's not present in any other phytopathogenic fungi so what is the use of this glycosylation see when the glycosylation uh, gene clusters are there it is used for its bioactivity and solubilities and biocompatibility and it also have the huge biological potential based on the research so out of the seven we proceeded to the bipolaris surcania for the further isolation of this compound so bipolar surcanias we all know that it's one of the high pathogenic and toxin producing strains it mostly affect the wheat plant okay so what is the unique in this phytopathogenic normal fungal and this see normal fungal can survive with all nutrition in this but the, when the phytopathogenic want to survive in the field it should uh, resist towards that host defense mechanism so due to that it capable to produce that uh, some unique compound to adapt that environment it's changing is a gene structure to resist that immune system of the plant so due to that it's capable to produce our uh, biosynthesized novel compounds this is the way the scientists are predicting and very unique thing is most of the toxins are isolated from the plant pathogenic is uh, non-toxic to the human okay that is the unique things the researchers found so Based on the our uh, biosynthetic gene cluster, the glycosylation uh, transfers gene, we proceeded with the only bipolaris surcania. So another, when we started to isolate, we found that very unique one is it capable to produce 515 transfused bicycling ring system is a present in the bipolaris surcanic compound. So as I told that in the gene cluster, we predicted this have this particular unique uh, uh, terpenase synthesis gene it has. So for isolation, we also approached the traditional uh, media approach, liquid and solid media. So fungal is generally based on our experience. We move for the solid media, rice media, Q6 and Martin solid media. We try to enhance the production of the particular compound, uh, terpenoid. That's the approach called Osmoca. As I told that one strain mini compound, we tried the several methods, but the particular terpenoid compounds are not enhanced. So obviously, next we went to that saccharomyces cerevisiae to like say expression system so it's very one of the unique system is capable to uh, activate most of the silence gene so what we did we uh, clone the particular gene from bipolaris and we expressed in the saccharomyces cerevisiae to like expression system it's uniquely it expressed the particular silence gene after expression we went for isolation and purify the compound and characterization we found that two novel 
terpenoid be isolated. Cestiterocognizin A, cestiterocognizin A. Like this, two uh, novel compounds be isolated. Along with that, three known compounds also we got it through this heterologism, which is not expressed in a normal condition. Okay, and the main thing is this two unique com uh, combo not reported so far anywhere, and it portends a high biological activity towards the uh, we found that anti-inflammatory and anti-bacterial activity it process. And not only that, we also propose that what is the biosynthetic pathway, how these compounds are produced by using the gene knockout one by one. And we also propose that how this new compound are produced this by polaris time. So this by polaris, the two, what is the new compound uh, it produces is coming under the group called a terpepsis time. Okay, this is a group of sesquiterpin featured by the transfusive 515 membrane ring skeleton. As I told that, that the particular 515 members ring skeleton reported sesquiterpins are very, very rare. So, so far, 45 natural products only isolated from the, this particular group. This particular group, it possesses antivirus activity, antimicrobial, cytotoxic, phytotoxicity, and anti-inflammatory even the brain shrimp lethal activity. Like that, it has a very unique potential. So from this phytopathogen, based on this genome mining, first we found that this particular genome is there. Then after that, uh, using the heterolox expiration, we successfully isolated the two novel compounds. Like this, around 10 compounds so far, novel compounds we isolated from the phytopathogenic strains. So here only I've shown the one model remaining be not shown because the compounds are under pattern process. Okay, so sir, is easy now. The whole genome sequence can be carried out. Then uh, we can go the heterologous expression. Then we can easily can express. We can know it's not one second. The real challenge with us, the more than hundred or one fifty KB, the gene cluster sometimes not only the small size. It will be big size. 10, 20, 30, even most of the gene cluster, the size is more than 100 KB. More than 30 KB, if we go, we want to prepare library. Okay, that is a traditional way to do it. It takes several years to do. That is the biggest challenge. So, recent uh, technology called CRISPR, everyone might be here. Clusterly legless interface short palindrome report. What is palindrome? If you read front and back, it will give the same meaning. Refer, if you read back, it's refer, rotor, backside, if you read rotor. So what is mean by CRISPR? CRISPR is nothing but the immune system of the bacteria. We think so far the uh, human and other plant only have that immune system. The researchers found that the bacteria also have the immune system. Against what? Obviously the phages. We, several times we studied in our school times, right? The phage will go and sit on the bacteria, it multiply and it burst and several new phages will come. This is the story we heard, but it's no more like that. The bacteria is also producing certain kind of uh, immun immunity kind of common. It's nothing but nucleus enzyme. When the phage releases DNA, this nucleus will go and denature that. The scientists found that and they got the Nobel Prize for this. Both uh, Emmanuel Charpenter and Jennifer Donovan for this discovery. Not only identified this, they found that this can be used for genome editing purpose in human and bacteria. For that application, they got the Nobel Prize. So two unique enzymes are there, CRISPR-Cas9 as well as CRISPR-Cas12. So what is the two difference? The Cas9 everyone here is uh, originally they, uh, isolated from the Streptococcus uh, strain, actually this is. Everyone will tell it will be uh, capable to identify the G is the starting, PAM region. Like uh, how the restriction enzyme needs some uh, initial starting point, right? Like that, this, this nuclease also needed starting point is like a G. And most of the researchers will tell that it, is, it will be able to create the blunt end. So we all know that restriction is able to create two kind of ends, right? Blunt end, sticky end. But the cast most of the peoples will tell it's create blunt end. But the true is one side it will create the blunt, one side it will be create the sticky end. So what our team decided, as I told that the cloning is a very challenging preparing library and others. So for heterologous expression also, we first step is the cloning to capture the old biosynthetic gene clusters. As I told that fungi also, most of the gene cluster, when we analyze in anti-smash, the size is more than uh, 30 KB, 50 KB, 100 KB. Even what are the sesquiterpene I've shown that is around 30 KB size. 
okay so there is urgent need to find the direct cloning method which can be done within a week so what we done we take the back plasmid and uh, the two homologous arm we created and we treated with the cas9 same cas9 enzyme we treated with the host dna also for this the model organism we took is streptomyces albus because it's a high gc content streptomyces gene okay so we take that as a model then the same cas9 we we tried but when we cut we are unable to achieve the a direct cloning successfully it's keep on failure then 2013 and 15 the researcher found another new enzyme called castrole previously is called as a cpf1 this immune system they found in privatella francisella in 2015 they found it in asnomonococcus and lachospirae they found another two new castrole enzyme it's a new enzyme what is the difference between cas9 and castrole means as i told that it needs starting point is g for the cas9 for castrole it needs the starting point is t the 3 2t or 3t is a it will go and cleave the particular area that is a castrole is a unique one so what is the unique difference between these two enzymes is cas9 need a 79 long trans rna castrole need only 43 is enough and it need g rich is needed T. The castrin, as I told, researchers will tell always a blended it create. Castrole will create the sticky end. And main thing is the off target activity. Castrin have medium to high, but castrole have very less off target activity. That is a unique one. After 2013 discovery, this enzyme applied in different application. Okay. So some of the application, even the wild strain uh, in fungi, they use this enzyme to activate the novel compounds and enhance the several enzymes and antibiotics from fungi so with the same castrol enzyme we developed the cloning method called as a cat fishing method as i told in the starting the plasmid we created use the cas9 to clear the site instead of now the cas9 we use this time as a castrole because castrole have the sticky end as i told that what is the unique sticky end it have means eight sticky end able to create Generally, any restriction enzyme can able to cre create five base pair sticky end only. But this LP castrole is capable to create a eight base pair sticky end. So it's somewhat very high length one. And particularly, we use the LP castrole enzyme because it's a very unique one and very less off target activity. So using this enzyme, first we started to optimize what are the plant site it needed. Everyone will tell only triple T is needed to cleave this uh, CRISPR enzyme. So along with triple T, we found that TTA and TTC also very unique PAM site to cleave this enzyme will activate. And what are the buffers and how much time it need? The very unique thing is CRISPR is within 10 minutes it capable to cleave. Okay, but general procedure everyone will keep one hour, two hour, three hours. But so 10 minutes is enough to break DNA. So with this uh, principle and uh, knowledge, we directly went to choose the three different uh, uh, size of uh, gene clusters, polymycin, surgamide, and candesidine. The polymycin, the size is you can see 49 kb. The surgamide is have uh, the 87 kb, and candesidine is the 139 kb. This all three gene clusters are silenced in streptomyces albus time, in the wild time. It uh, not expressed in the normal media it needs something to activate so as i told that using this uh, catfish uh, technology both uh, this particular uh, homologa arm we attach it in the plasmid then after that the whole dna is isolated and run by pfg gel the after treated with the castrole enzyme the the dna is run and it will fragmented in the different regions and the particular uh, target uh, gene clusters alone separated then we the gene uh, from the gel we cutted and gel extraction was done and we simply put it along with the cas9 we added the ligase enzyme within three days we successfully cloned the 137 gene cluster just imagine several years which is took now we can able to complete in the three days itself using this catfishing technology so due to that several new antibiotics our teams are discovered and we filed patents using this unique uh, cloning technology developed by the castrole enzymes
so this is that uh, as i told that uh, pfg long uh, gel so from the uh, we added both forward and reverse uh, targeted uh, cast toilet treated and the two bands are separated then this region so only the target region we cut uh, gel extraction we done and we do the ligation successfully using this method so not only that you uh, so far, I told only the Cas9 and Cas12 enzyme only used for this uh, etalox expression system. After developed this methodology for Acnobacteria, we also applied this method for our fungal gene clusters also. Here, the data I am not uh, presenting here because uh, this all are under uh, some our patent uh, process. So successfully in Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Aspergillus. Uh, Flavors also we have the heterox expression system using this CRISPR catfishing method. We successfully cloned up to 150 KB gene cluster. We successfully cloned. But what is the problem? Real problem means the Cas9 and Cas12. When you go to the commercial purpose, like entrepreneurs who want to start the future, some fungal based things. So all the technology is patented by Chinese and US people. We don't have any enzyme pattern, Cas9 and the Cas12, we don't have pattern. Both have by US and Chinese. So our team parallelly working on to find some new enzyme. Recently, the CSAR lab, uh, uh, Mukherjee, maybe he had, who developed the CRISPR uh, diagnostic kit during COVID-19 time, Feluda kit. Okay, the FN Cas9 enzyme, uh, the genetic engineer FN Cas1, uh, Cas9 pattern only India currently have. So our team parallelly working to find some new CRISPR enzymes. So as I told that uh, several uh, whole genome now easily available in the NCV website. So we collected all the data, we try to discover some new CRISPR enzyme. Now we working on that Cas3 enzyme, another new CRISPR enzyme, which can be used for gene editing purpose. From Acnobacteria we found several uh, Cas3. It's a uh, work is going on, future we will. India also have surely one CRISPR pattern with us. So thank you for your all attention. So as I already told about our society, so we are encouraging in India who are all interested to apply the synthetic biology. Why we you now collaborated with the micro uh, microbiology team means so in fungi also in India only few peoples are uh, applying the synthetic biology. We want a lot of people should uh, uh, start their synthetic biology. Uh, knowledge apply into the fungal research also to find the new molecules now symbio grants applications are open so those who are all interested so we give a want to more chance to the fungal research team who are working and who are all interested to start this new field we are also guiding directly how we can apply this crispr uh, technology to the fungals and everything we are guiding also so we are inviting you all to welcome our uh, sixth annual meeting happening in uh, well tech university already so these are all the renowned uh, speakers in a uh, foreign and india overall synthetic biology field they're all are coming in person in Chennai. i welcome you all so this is my entire team where we did uh done this uh, uh the heterolox expression and crispr work everything i thanks to my professor one of the leading synthetic biology scientists professor Ling ching job so this is the first lab 10,000 acnobacteria whole genome sequencing done as well as the 500 uh, phytopathogenic fungi uh, sequencing done okay from there we found that lot of new drug molecules present this both strain acnobacteria as well as the phytopathogenic fungi so those kind of research should be strongly should be initiated in india with the collaborative team thank you all for your attention questions are welcome Thank you, uh, Dr. Karthik, for a very nice and informative talk uh, and uh, highlighting the need of antibiotics and the bioinformatic role of bioinformatics tools in the drug discovery, uh, in the, especially in the recent times, and uh, uh, especially elaborating on the CRISPR mechanism, uh, especially the Cas9 and Cas12. Apart from other uh, topics like fungal terpenome and uh, fungal sesquiterpenoids. Uh, as per our uh, thing, I request everyone to kindly raise your hands uh, to ask your questions. So one by one, we'll be going ahead with your uh, uh, questions. Uh, Sachin uh, Rajput, uh, 
can you ask your question yes sir thank you uh, sir i want to ask why uh, pathogenic fungi are used for uh, pathogenic fungi is used for uh, this phytochemical uh, basically uh, metabolites as drug, drug discovery uh, i am not clear C could you please repeat the question please why only uh, pathogenic fungi is preferred rather than other fungi and not only phytophytic fungi, as I told that uh, unique characters. See, we have worked on both the sponge associated. The sponge associated is a very adverse condition. See, what the as a researchers we found that uh, which is a normal wild strain and which is the growing in the stress condition, these metabolites are unique, right? Which is going some stress related environment to survive it in that area. It uh, the metabolic genes are very unique in this. In such a way, only the phytopathogenic fungi, and I use the one more uh, strain like a sponge associated deep sea fungi, have more unique uh, antibiotic genes compared to the wild strain. That is why we are working on this too. And not only just to by word, as I told that we have entire whole genome sequencing in wild strain. We analyze which is uh, submitted in NCBA. Also, our team have that uh, sponge associated fungi whole genome as well as phytopathogenic fungi strains we had. When we analyze that compared to the wild, it have more unique uh, gene cluster it, they are present in the whole genome sequence. Okay, with that only, we strongly suggesting you people also should uh, choose such a uh, unique styles to, to get the new antibiotics for your research. Uh, thank you, Dr. Karthik. Uh, honestly, I'll, uh, uh, I'll be honest that when uh, as a mycologist, when we uh, learn, so those the pathogens which have been taught as a pathogen, the organisms that have been taught as a pathogen, we it's in mind that, okay, these are the pathogens. Thank you for giving us the other side of the pathogens also. Uh, Dr. Kotes Varao, uh, sir, please go ahead with your question. Dr. Kotes Varao, uh, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for uh, um, uh, admitting me. And uh, Dr. Karthik is very excellent. You know, insights were given into this, particularly in the metabolomics. I mean, metabolites, which is in, uh, uh, I mean, the, the expression systems and many things you talk. Uh, so, we are also working on the similar line, which is you know, the, one of the the thing is that we are doing the conventional way. This is the column based, and we are just uh, uh, structural elucidations and the finding of you know these molecules. And this really, this kind of you know, the, the expertise really, which is you know, lacking in India. Uh, many of the you know uh, uh, expertise you look into this fungal system and expressing into the you know Casper based. So the my the specific question is that because now even if you look into these uh, many you know uh, the molecule which is an antibiotic which is like you know the penicillin, even India is lacks of you know the commercial and which is we could not able to compete to these uh, the Chinese uh, the market. So whether I mean, is not only for the penicillin, whether uh, the, the really whatever the, the based, I mean, uh, the CRISPR based or whatever the, uh, you know, editing tools we are using, whether can you really, uh, you know, make any viable process by using these technologies? Yes, sir. So I think, yeah, one more important thing I want to share in my personal uh, lab itself. So, yeah. uh, you know, the ivermectin drugs uh, from streptomyces yes. ivermectin in COVID time, several things. Uh, it's uh, discovered, I think, uh, around 1960 something. Uh, mm. The drug is mm. very old drug, but mm. the strain is able to produce only 0 0.009 gram per liter, sir. So due okay. to that, the market rate is two lakh rupees per kg. So as I told that uh, my lab is unique for synthetic biology. We made a promoter's uh, engineering. We made with this uh, promoter engineering now 0 0.009 gram per liter now converted into now 9 gram per liter you can see how much fold is now increased yeah certainly and due to yes. that the price is now same ivermectin is now 5000 per kg so 2 lakh per kg to 5000 it came so now this antibiotic is uh, produced by only my labs in worldwide sir we are the only producer of that but this is really... in China, <laughs> so yeah. this is the way I really uh, interested. 2019, I came back to India to initiate this uh, society, sir, because China is uh, equal to us as per me. Because oh, okay. most of the knowledge and project working by us, as you told that only we are lacking only funds. So we are the okay. big source and technology. That's why through this society, we are uh, guiding how to use this CRISPR technology, how to use this bioinformatics, anti-smash, everything we are guiding, sir. So if you are interested, okay. 
really we are happy to collaborate with everyone to try new people how this uh, technology anti smash can be used how crispr where you can get even we are providing crispr plasmid overall want through official channel you can get free of cost from us we are helping every way so this is the price wise now china as i told iromaitin they are the leading producer like that what are the compound we have using this technology one day we can also achieve our uh, prime minister plan make in india we can also surely can achieve some compounds in india i have strong believe on this yeah that's really the help us as you know like you know young, uh, you know the, the researchers for us like us and uh, because uh, even one of the project which is on the penicillin production we spent a mm -hmm. lot of money but we could not able to you know success at least you know uh, the the I mean uh, one to five gram level as well because if you look into this penicillin itself is as a more than 50 grams per kg in i mean per liter production and similarly even we have a group of i mean we have a library of the molecule which is coming from the purely of you know uh, from uh, the fungal sources which it has a uh, you know the particular for filamentous, which is from the marine sources also we have made a group and we have uh, structural characterizations and uh, you know all these uh, characterizations we have done and these are some of the molecules also showing good activity towards these amr strains okay. so really uh, if you could really you know give a chance to us to collaborate with you that really help us to proceed further you know no sir as i told we are so happy that is the purpose now uh, association of fungal microba and uh, SESB now joined together uh, to initiate the synthetic body research in fungi so we are more happy to help and guide and work as a team to achieve this we are so yeah, happy that collaborate yeah, yeah thank you yeah same thing you know, i'm really you know happy i mean the organizing you know such kind of conference you know mm -hmm. the webinars and the conferences uh, those both the fungal association of biologists and uh, uh, micro asia so really i'm thankful to you both the come you know the the uh, uh, bodies so thank you. Yeah, thanks, sir, Karthik. We'll catch up in by private privately. Yeah. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you, sir. The uh, I, I think uh, the online boards do not have uh, coffee breaks or tea breaks and the lunch breaks, but I think question and answer yeah. sessions are a good platform to have the collaboration. That is the purpose of the yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. collaborations. Thank you, Dr. Kuteshwarao and Dr. Karthik for the nice initiative. Uh, I now invite Dr. Sanjay Saxena, sir. Sir, please go ahead with your question. Dr. Karthik, it was a very interesting and a very informative talk. And what we basically are struggling in the secondary metabolite domain basically is uh, uh, enhancing the production of the metabolite to an appreciable level wherein you can commercialize it, which is the crux which you have really hit on. Uh, what is your opinion in terms of uh, endophytic fungi? Because you have talked about pathogenic, but I'm interested in knowing about endophytic fungi and those mimicking plant products. Yeah, sir, I am strongly ag agreeing with you, sir. In China, we are also working on TCM, sir. TCM based mm -hmm. some endophytic fungus we work. And yeah. we found that it also, as uh, the expert uh, thinking is right, uh, most of the plant metabolites uh, is uh, present in that uh, endophytic uh, fungi, sir. It has the mm -hmm. unique gene. So it's yeah. one of the very good area we can work in India, sir. We, I'm strongly suggesting that uh, uh, you can work on that. But main thing is, we should do that complete whole genome, sir. What is the problem? I will tell now. In endophytopathogenic, mostly we are doing say, 18x or draft genome. We are finishing. That's a problem. We are unable to locate the novel gene which is present in that strains. So when you are capable to complete the whole genome, complete whole genome, that means not a partial or something. It 8 MB means 8 MB. If we complete, surely we can locate a lot of novel gene clusters and while locating the gene clusters we can capable to locate the what are the promoters which are easy to engineer the particular compounds sir this is because, my uh, and what is your opinion about creating epigenetic mutants yeah sir epigenetic mutants is now next uh, growing field sir so far i not work but one of my collaborators in us uh, they are working on this the mutation uh, epigenetic mutation they are creating through the like uh, recently the cas9 because the previous the random mutation you know that the traditional way they do now they created the cas9 based uh, the epigenetic mutation they are trying sir but the success rate still they not uh, made very unique way because i have i have really worked on one isolate which is producing a plant based compound very expensive molecule uh, in nutraceutical field and uh, we have used we have developed a variety of epigenetic mutants and i have one mutant which is enhancing the production by 25 folds oh very nice sir so i just wanted to understand uh, how 
how genomics can help me in uh, differentiating between the original parent strain and this strain and how can I further potentiate using technologies like DNA shuffling? Yeah, it can be it can be done, sir. So I think after this presentation, we can personally we can contact uh, sure. by you. Then I can guide where we can uh, do this work. And uh, even I can connect some of the good labs who is uh, have this complete facilities. You can complete this work, sir. The sure. particular place I can recommend you, sir. Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay Sikhana, sir, for the questions. Uh, I think Dr. Uh, P. N. Singh also has uh, a question. Uh, Dr. P. N. Singh, if you can unmute and uh, ask your question. Dr. P. N. Singh, sir, can you, uh, uh, am I audible to you? Can you unmute and ask your question? Uh, I think uh, it's not audible to him. Uh, Dr. Karthik, I have a small question. Like, like uh, you mentioned that uh, CAS 12 is better than CAS 9. And since it's a new thing that is coming out uh, with it, what are the technical uh, suggestions or the uh, troubleshoots or some kind of problems, hurdles that people can uh, get while working on it as a uh, young researchers who want to work on that? Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, through my personal experience, I we worked on both CAS9 and cas 12 In cas 12 also, we worked on FN cas 12 LP cas 12 all three, four uh, techni uh, different strains that reported cas 12 we worked. So, my experience is compared to everyone, LP cas 12 is quite good because of its list of target activity. Most, most, most one will tell theory based, but I am sharing my experience, what uh, the really we observed in the whole genome when we applied whether it affects only in the target area and different area. Off target is nothing but everywhere the T and G will be there, right, sir? The Cas9 will mostly will affect and everywhere. But Cas9 will be also there, but it's very less. And in the Cas12 also, particularly the LP Cas12 is quite good. So those who are all uh, work on the strain improvement and others, uh, gene editing and wild strains, my suggestion is choose the LP Cas12. It's a good uh, choice for your work because of less of target activity and easy to handle it. OK, so this is my suggestion for them, sir. OK, uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karthik. Uh, Dr. Shanoi, I think, has a uh, question. Yes, I do. Thank you, Rohit. Uh, Dr. Karthik, that was a wonderful presentation. Uh, you, recently, I visited the website of uh, Indian uh, Lichenological uh, Society. and. Uh, I found there are some very useful uh, study materials for the beginners. Do you plan to kind of upload such material for the synthetic biology on your society's website? Because many, many so people are not so. uh, aware where to find the beginner's guide kind of thing, actually. Yeah. Uh, sir, thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, good suggestion, sir. So really, sir, we are uh, uh, take this uh, suggestion. Surely we will upload for the society because uh, like how you are academic people, we are industry people. So mostly we are also spending in R&D life only a few times we are getting. It is also six years old. Now we need like uh, elders people like you to advise us in our society to improve, uh, to help the society in, and as well as the researchers. Surely we will upload it soon in uh, our website, sir. Which Thank is you, for you. everyone. Thank you, Dr. Kapi. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Maybe Dr. Maybe Dr. Singh. Yes, I think uh, Dr. Pian Singh, can you uh, hear us? Uh, if you have question, please go ahead with your question. Okay, I have to unmute him. Or... He's already a contributor. He can just uh, unmute and ask the question if he's available. Otherwise, we can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, he's online, but I think he's not able to unmute and ask question because he's uh, available online. Let's go ahead. Then. Yeah. <clears throat> I think okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Karthik. I think uh, we have we have come to the end of today's uh, session. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, to host today's online talk. Uh, I think doc on uh, drugs discovery by phytopathogenic fungi uh, presented by Dr. Karthik.
uh, on behalf of association of fungal biologists and society of chemical and synthetic biology extend my heartfelt thanks to dr karting and engaging in this insightful sessions uh, especially uh, taking uh, talking uh, about the uh, fungal biology applications Uh, participants i think a special thanks to the complete uh, organizing team of both the associations uh, who have made this uh, kind of webinar uh, kind of bring to this point we look forward to welcoming you all for more events thank you all participants thank you thank you once again for uh, uh, today's session i thank dr deshmukh sir and dr shnoy for uh, giving me this opportunity Finally, I invite uh, Dr. Deshmukh sir to please uh, have a final word. Uh, actually, this type of work is good, but what happens that when we go for in vivo studies, some of these molecules they are not working. After that, we find problem with the pharmacokinetics, so they are not available. They are easily extracted out. So all those things we have to consider when we are getting new molecules because see. when we use epigenetic modifier co culture studies and other studies so we get new molecules but uh, getting them and after that for developing these things are needed so i think we can give some emphasis on this secondly genomics when we are having that these genes are in various places so cloning becomes a difficult and uh, sometimes we don't get desired compound and we get a compound which is the analog of the whatever compound we are looking for so for that we have to do the synthesis and develop that compound so those things has to be taken care of. i think i we should thankful to him for giving the talks and giving right. the idea about the casper cas9 and casper 12a so i think we can have one presentation particularly taking one example of particular fungus for developing this casper cas9 because when we were working with pigments in that case citrine was producing along with the red pigment we have tried to do this use this technique and uh, citrine production was reduced or it was it disappeared so this type of things we have to select a strain for development and do it i think this is from my side yes sir Thanks. i agree i agree with you sir i think many of the wild strains they lose the properties in the biofermentation stage and that's a very disheartening at that point I agree yes. I, I hello think, hello uh, mr rohit uh, yes uh, pn singh sir please uh, yeah we yeah have a good afternoon yes. actually i was unable to uh, that uh, start my microphone in that my laptop so, so uh, there is a little uh, very uh, small query from my side so can you can i ask uh, yes sir please ask your question you are online ah uh, dr karthik uh, can you hear me yes sir i am hearing sir please sir yeah so uh, since you have shown that now this uh, sir tarpin i have seen bipolaris sorokaniana okay yes sir so i think that there is a mean uh, number of that more than 100 species of the uh, bipolaris and apart from this bipolaris cercospora fungi and like bipolaris etcetera hylum carbularia a number of genera are there so only you have uh, worked on this bipolaris only that analysis related to terpenoids as a antibiotic source or some other bipolaris genera which are very pathogenic to plant uh, plants uh, sir you are asking why i chosen only the sorcanica not other species in bipolaris right sir yeah so, other species and apart from this other cercospora which are very very deadly pathogenic to like a cercospora cercospora sir as i told that uh, in every species as i told in our lab uh, in our lab we have only 500 pathogenic fungi sir in our collections so in this we have three four species of bipolaris so which is we found that as i told that glycotransferase the particular unique way what way the sorcania is i choose and i mentioned in my biosynthetic the second slide itself the glycotransferase present in the only sorcania sir not other species we not found that sir uh, when the glycotransferase uh, gene is there it the more bioavailability and uh, toxicity will be less the, based on the researchers finding that's why we went to only the particular species sir not other species of bipolaris 
Okay, but but you have already studied on this other species that for that analysis, but they are not able to produce that if that has been added. Okay. Yes, sir. The Saskito, as I told, uh, Sarah also uh, told very uh, good things. When you go even isolate several molecules, end uh, the pharmacokinetics and uh, the drug, it's not a druggable molecule at all. So what our team, we had, we have unique uh, in silico tools. Uh, so when the biosynthetic gene clusters itself, we directly, the predicted molecule will come. Okay, the primary itself, the docking will do, whether it's a uh, druggable, chances will be high or not. Okay, like that, several uh, tools are now came. After knowing that thing only, the particular um, uh, gene cluster will concentrate to clone. Because after spending this many things, if they finally, it's not a druggable, really, it's a waste of time, right, sir? But this uh, in silico tools really is helping now to short down which is the uh, lead uh, binding gene cluster we can choose initially itself for cloning purpose. So that in silico based only, we choose which particular genus, this particular gene cluster we can choose. After that only, we are going only particular species, not everything, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Karthik. Thank yeah. you very much for this nice presentation. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can thank advise you. only theoretically since I am super animated, but you can take my help in production of secondary metabolites since I have experience with the Sinophy as well as with the Penamol Enterprises and Terry Deacon Nanobiotechnology Center. Sure, sir. So it's a great uh, pleasure to us, sir. That's why through after this after the presentation, uh, I will get all the people's mail ready. Surely we can lot of the way we can collaborate each other, sir. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Karthik. I, I, that's what I was intending to say. That uh, I hope this is not the one, but it is the beginning of the such kind of events in future by both the associations and the societies. A collaboration that will begin. Yes. Uh, Dr. Shiva, do you have any uh, thing to say, or, in, or if we can conclude? Yeah, I want to thank you for you know, managing the show today, <laughs> and I would like yeah. to thank Karthi for the wonderful presentation and uh, you know, very exciting interactions we have had, and Dr. Deshmukh and uh, our wonderful people in the audience. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Sir. Have thank a wonderful you. day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye, sir.